Okay, guys. Hello. Please welcome to Let's Balance Analysis Examples. I also have a beautiful quote there for you guys. Doing is believing. Mm -hmm. Doing is believing. <sighs> okay, let's move on. So, we have a question from our mid-test question one. It says that a bioreactor has exploded in a small town, inside the small town. The town is within a valley with a rectangular shape, approximately 5 kilometers long and 1 kilometer wide, with a depth of 400 meters. The valley is exposed to high level of methane from the plant due to failure. The concentration of methane released into the atmosphere was measured as 7.22 milligrams, milligrams per meter cubed. Okay, so guys, what we have to understand from this question is that this bioreactor plant is inside the small town, not outside. So guys, please note that. Alright, so methane, the methane release was, was almost instant and it was uniformly distributed throughout the town's atmosphere. Calculate the concentration of methane in the in the in the in the valley's air in PEMV, assuming the atmospheric pressure to be this and that. But already we do have the concentration of methane into the atmosphere of the into the atmosphere of this valley so guys in it this is how we do it from here we have this concentration but they want it in ppmv this question is simply asking you to convert from ppmv to no from milligrams per, per meters cube to ppmv so we have the the concentration in this and then we have we can get the molecular weight we have the R, which is a constant. We have the number of moles. We have the temperature, and we have the atmospheric pressure. Guys, before getting into it, there is a method of converting from milligrams per meter cube in the textbook. You can use that method, or you can use mine. This one I like it because it's it's, it's shorter. That one is a bit longer, but you always get the same answer. So we go on and get the volume using the 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 idea gas law, and you get it. After getting the volume. We, but you have to use that one if you don't have the volume there. So this one, it says, for you to move from milligrams per meters cubed to ppmv, you must multiply the concentration in milligrams per meters cubed by the volume divided by the molecular weight. And this is what you get at the end. That was my, my first question. The second question said, assuming methane concentration you calculated in a is the initial concentration in the valley. Determine the time it will take for the concentration to decrease to a safe limit of that. Uh, the wind speed through the valley entering at one end and exceeding at the other is 0 0.1. It's only 1.5 mm meters per minute. However, methane also is removed by two other processes, decay with the rate, the rate constant of that and sedimentation to the ground with a rate constant of that. Draw the situation and label the appropriate variables. Guys, please note that sedimentation, even if you check on the internet or you check in the textbook under wastewater management, sedimentation is also another way of removing, decaying. So we have two decaying that are going to be okay with. This question had a story on top but this question just wanted us to draw a picture of the situation and label the appropriate variables so how did i go on entering i went on and i drew the this and then i drew the in and the out please note that this is concentration in but you can this i just you can i prefer drawing the, the the plant inside this thing just to show that the plant is inside so the c plant and the q plant is inside not coming from outside so yeah and then the next question is derive an equation that expresses the concentration of methane in the rivers air in the valleys air as a function of time since the plant ex exploded 
use the equation to determine the, 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 the time in minutes needed for the concentration to decrease to a safe level. You need to integrate to solve for time. So, guys, we this is the only mass balance analysis question. The rest it was chemistry, the other one was logic. More more like logic. Yeah, but yeah. So guys, here what did I do? I wrote the universal mass balance analysis equation and then I wrote the universal mathematical uh, mass balance analysis question. Uh -uh. Uh, equation and then they said they want time and they wanted me to integrate guys know your maths here i didn't integrate i just put on maths microsoft maths and then i got my t to be this but guys i advise please integrate because you guys won't go into the exam with the microsoft maths né? so know your integration and then you will see that you will get this so the other thing that you must note is that the c in which is the concentration of uh, methane coming into the valley from other valleys or from the nearest the town, blah, blah, is zero because this thing exploded inside the, uh, um, um, inside the, 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 the valley. So you go on. Before substituting, let me explain how I got my flow rate. My flow rate, I have the wind speed that is for in and out. So the wind speed multiplied by the area that's how i got my flow rate and then i calculated my volume using a uh, normal mathematics and then and then i substituted here and i got my time to be 46.4 minutes so guys please know, you know, know your maths know your chemistry you see this question uh, it's a chemistry mixed up with a uh, convergence mixed up with maths and my uh, so moving on we go on to question two oh, i don't like even questions so the question two states that all of that story no but let me just read it uh the water quality of hydrological catchment in south africa are regulated by department of water and sanitation the department has put forward the limits of water quality that can enter the natural environment of this catchment. These are called water quality planning limits. In many cases, the mining industry which stores their polluted water in pollution control dams needs to discharge their mine affected water to the environment to avoid overflow and potential um, mining production loss. Yeah, that. The global resource coal mine has two pollution control dams, dams, namely pollution control dam A and pollution control dam B. I'm not gonna say that is so long, so I'm just gonna say D A and D B, meaning that dam A and dam B. The dams are located near the Shamani River. The polluted river in the polluted water in D A and D B both have a high concentration of SO4. The A has a has a SO4 concentration of 312 milligrams per liter, and the B has a concentration of SO4 of 631 milligrams per liter. The dams are near full capacity volume, and the mine operators would like to discharge the water into the Shimani River. The river has an upstream flow of 0.15 meters cubed per second, and a background SO4 concentration of 23 milligrams per liter. The DWS has set WQPL for the SO4 concentration back of in the Shamani River catchment as 100 mg per liter. The WQPL is reduced by the safety factor of 10% to ensure that any small changes in the upstream concentration do not suppress the WQPL. Determine the amount of water that can be discharged into D, from the A and DP to ensure that WQPL reduced safety value is not exceeded. So the discharge of the dams must must have a ratio of 40 and, and 40 and 60 percent. Okay. <clears throat> Before we start looking at this question already, you should have picked up that we are dealing with a mass fraction uh, uh, concept because we are dealing with the same material from different sources that they gave us the ratio of each 
flow rate or the or, or the ratio of the amount of each um, water that must that should leave each dam. So when we add them, they must give us hundred percent. Then we know that okay, hundred percent is the total flow rate. So for DA, it's going to be sixty percent of hundred of that of that Q total, and for DB, it's going to be forty percent of that total. So <clears throat> moving on, you see here I drew from DA to DB. All of them they get to the they meet they meet at the river, and then I also uh, have dotted lines here to dot out my control volume. So my control volume is also a mixing point. That's where the river, the A and the B meets. So at a mixing point, the concentration changes and the flow rate changes. So they mix and they become one. So going to the catchment, they are already one. Sharp. So reading the question, we have we have realized that it's a steady state conservative question. So we cancel out accumulation and we cancel out reaction rate. And then we remain with input is supposed to output. So guys, before continuing, for catchment, we have 90 milligrams per liter as our concentration. But in the in the question, in the question they stated that it should be 100 milligrams per liter. But why is it 90 now? So guys, remember they said that it should be reduced by 10% in case anything happens. So I went on and said, okay, my 100% multiply by 10% and I got 10. And then I said, okay, 100 minus 10 is equal to 90. So that's how I arrived to 90 milligrams per liter. So we, have, we also need the flow rate at the catchment. The flow rate at the catchment has to be the flow rate of the A plus the flow rate of the B plus the flow rate of the of the river but remember the a and the b is given to us in the ratios so already we know it's a mass fraction so we have to come up with a new name for the for the for the flow rate so i came up with q total 0 0.6 plus 0 0.1 gives me one so it's one so i know that from q total the a is 60 percent of q total and the b is 40 percent of q total so that's how i came up with the new name just to reduce the number of unknowns so that I can be able to solve my questions. Plus 0 0.15, 0 0.15 being the flow rate of the river. So I went on and I applied, and then I started substituting. I solved for Q total, which was my unknown, but the question was not for me to get the Q total, but rather get the, the flow rate of each. So I went on and said, um, Q, QDA is equal to D 60% multiply by q total and i got this and i said q db is equal to 40 percent multiply by that and then that's how i got my answer okay guys this, that was it this question had um the mixing point and it also had the um a step what's the fraction it also had the mass fraction concept in it and it's also a mass balance analysis so remember the cases can also mix so we had three cases in one question steady state conservative case the mixing point concept and the the mass function concept so moving on we have a water treatment plant has requested your your help in determining the best type of reactor either cmfr or pfr to oxidize this in a polluted water through aeration the incoming water stream has this concentration of fe at a flow rate of that and the water quality limit of fe is equals to 0 0.5 milligrams per liter so guys already we know that this is our final concentration that we must arrive at to achieve the discharge of the water the water treatment plant manager has conducted laboratory tests to determine the first order rate constant for the ox oxygenation of Fe to the power of 2 price. S0.15, calculate the minimum detention time and the reactor volume necessary to oxidize this. Assume that the O, the dissolved oxygen, is in equilibrium with the surrounding of the uh, atmosphere. So here, guys, we were supposed to more like compare the two reactors cmfr and our pfr so that we know which one to choose so
so like i said in the summary please go and read about the reactors in the masters and ella textbook if you do not have the masters and ella textbook below there's a link of a telegram group chat where we posted all the textbook and the material that we used to survive this course so we wrote i wrote out everything that i have i have my cue in and my my concentration of the fe and then we have our cue out of that and we have our our concentration of that please never mind the x not and the x out because this you have to have a knowledge of wastewater management waste, wastewater treatment but this question does not want wastewater treatment um, knowledge it just wants us to know mass balance analysis so already we have accumulation equals to input plus minus the reaction rate so guys we can see that it's a, it's, a, it's a steady state, so we can't sell out. And then we start saying, what do we have inside minus what we do not have, plus minus the reaction rate. But this one is a decay, so it's a negative. So we multiplied here, and then we got our volume to be 2,638.87 meters cubed. Not squared. Please note that. And then for us to get the time, we said V over Q is equal to theta. Take note that the theta denotes time. So it's 2,638.87 divided by the flow rate gives us that amount of time. I'm not very much sure about this time. But yeah, it gave us that. So please double check this. But the time we're not really gonna use it because we can always use the volume to compare the two. So we went on and said for the PFR, this is what we have. We drew PFR. Remember, it's long and what what. So with with the uh, PFR, we write the universal mass balance analysis equation, and then we go on and go to our reactions. We go to a batch and we check. Okay. So what do we do? what do, when we want a concentration in in the first order? Which equation do we use? I do not have them in mind, so I copied from my script sheet directly to my to my answer sheet, which was C T is equals to C not E T E drop out of that, and then I wrote I wrote and I found my time to be nineteen point nine eight minutes, and then for me to get my volume, I'm going to say flow rate multiplied by the time. And then we're going to get um, we're going to get um, 415.20 meters cubed as our as our 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 volume. So remember, here I was trying to convert this time. Okay, so looking at this volume and looking at the other one, we prefer CMFR because. Its capacity is much bigger compared to this one. If you can look at this, the capacity of this one is 2,638.87. So guys, we always check the one with the bigger capacity. So that's how we compare different reactors. So we please read about the reactors so that you get to understand. So moving on. Please, guys, note that I did not put in the question for this, and I'm not going to go through this question with you guys. The question is there on the lecture slides in Viros, no, 2019 in Viros Chemistry Review lecture slides. I don't know if this year you have this question. So, guys, please, please, as a, because we are working on limited time, I cannot go through all the questions some of the questions i just put on the memos so guys please check out that question and come to the video and see the memo so this is how we do it the question it's much easier than elementary kinetics you can go it's it's all chemistry <clears throat> mixed with mass balance analysis obviously so the other one is an example of a washing machine this question is there in the textbook. It's also there on the 28, 2019 in various lecture slides under mass balance analysis. The page number for the question is also there. So guys, I'm not gonna go through this question with you guys. 
So I wrote the, I posed the question and the answer for that question. So this question, here's the answer for it, but even the textbook will also guide you. So moving on, we are going to uh, uh, um, another question. This question is on the mass balance uh, analysis questions, examples for 2019 in various lecture slides. So this question states that a plateau creek carries five meters cubed per second of water with SE concentration of 0 0.015 milligrams. A farmer starts withdrawing this amount of the creek water to irrigate the land. During irrigation, the water picks up solemn SE from the salt, um, from the salt in the soil. One half of the irrigation water is lost into the ground and the other half is returned to the plate. The irrigation runoff contain one meters, uh, one milligrams per liter of SE. SE is a conservative non-reactive substance and the stream does not pick up any other SE from any source. If the farm irrigates continuously, what will be the steady state concentration of SE in the stream downstream from the farm? Okay, taking a break before we do the next example, we just wanted to remind you guys that you should remember that um, with mass balance analysis, um, you should do one material per mass balance. So you should focus um, on one material per mass balance, meaning that uh, when you are tracking mass, um, in when you have um, this equation here set up, you should set up this equation for one material because you cannot substitute... Um, details or properties of different materials in one mass balance equation. Each material has to have its own um, equation and solve um, for the relevant things um, separately. And you should remember that we are tracking mass. Obviously, guys, it's mass balance analysis after all. So we are tracking mass. So um, this is the the universal mass balance formula that you've been using. You know how it is used. So we just wanted to show you guys that indeed we are tracking mass here. So this is from this. So we are showing you that we are tracking the mass of different um, materials. So um this part q in c in we wanted to show you where it comes from so because we are checking mass um if you look at the units of our q which is the flow rate um it is volume per time right and c equals to mass per volume so when you um multiply the two its product gives you um, mass per time. So that's why we are using Q in and C in because we are tracking mass. And most of the time um, you, in your questions, you'll be given the flow rate and the concentration. So if they try to trick you guys and give you mass instead, don't be surprised or confused just know that we are tracking mess you can just use the mess if you're given mess but um in a situation where you are given the flow rate and concentration this is what you use again when you are answering your questions don't forget to sketch and write the objective so your objective um will come from the question so it will be like uh maybe the question wanted you to find um the concentration so under your objective you can say obtaining um concentration of one two three or whatever but always make sure that you sketch and Make sure that your sketch is very detailed. It is very self-explanatory um, and it explains the given scenario 
um, in full details. So you need to sketch the scenario and then after that, show us or highlight your control volume show us your control volume so that we know where you are mass balancing where will you be tracking the mess where will you track the mess right how did you answer this so guys if you look at this question you will remember the oral uh, uh, scenario number one number two you will remember you will see that it's a mixing and a, and a, and a splitting point question so this is what happened. The water was coming there peacefully at a rate of five meters cubed per minute per second. And then one the farmer withdrew, meaning that removed, split uh, one meters cubed per second from this. So meaning that this is part one and meaning that when it go, when it continues well, with, with with its journey, it will be four because now five one has left. So guys the concentration remains the same, but the flow rate changed to four and one. Remember the orals. And then, as the water it gets to the farmer, to the farm, there was a disturbance. So the concentration changed from um, 0 0.015 to one. And also, the 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 flow rate changed from one to half because. Yeah, half of it went into the into the into the soil and half of it continued with its journey. So going on and when we get here is a mixing point. So at a mixing point our flow rate changes and our concentration changes. So guys, what happens here? What happened here is that everything else is gonna change because we're gonna mix. Yeah? But the question wanted us to calculate the concentration at, at this point. So we're going to write our mass balance analysis equation. This is how we're going to solve this question. We're going to write down our mass balance analysis question, equation, universal, and cancel out accumulation. Why? Because it's a steady state. And then we cancel out reaction rate. Why? Because it's a non, it's a conservative substance. Yeah? And then we're going to be left with input is equal to output. At our input, we're going to say, Four, we are not going to use five because we are going to deal with everything that happened after this disturbance. So it's going to be four multiplied by 0 0.015. Plus, we are going to deal with the one that happened after this disturbance, which is one multiplied by half, half being the new flow rate, is equal to Q out multiplied by C out. What is C out? C out is what we want. Q out is what we're going to calculate. How do we, how do we get Q, C out? Um, Q, for us to get Q out, which is the flow rate out, we're going to sum up the flow rate after the disturbance has occurred. So we're going to say 4 plus half. And then we solve for our C out, which is the concentration that we leave the, um, um, the, 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 this system. So... So because from this equation, you can see that we had two unknowns. So we solved for the Q, right, which is this that we got. So solving for Q at any point, you can use that Q in is equals to Q out. So after you got um, your Q, you solved for Q. The only unknown now in this equation is C out. So from this equation, you can rearrange and make C out the subject of the formula, whereby now you can solve for this C out. So guys, make sure that um, your units are the same and you make the proper conventions to um, get to the final answer. So B says the fish fish are sensitive to selenium level over 0 0.04 milligrams per liter. The farmer agrees not to use more water than that, that than will keep the, the, the stream SE level below the critical concentration. How much water can the, the farmer withdraw? So guys, coming back here. 
the farmer withdraws that. So now we do not know the amount of. So guys, we do not know the amount of Q, which is QFM that the that the the farmer is going to withdraw because that's the one that we're going to be calculating. But we know that our final concentration should be 0 0.04, and we do not know the flow rate at the end, and we do not know the flow rate that after this disturbance, and we do not know the flow rate that the farmer would withdraw. But we do know the flow rate of um, the material after this disturbance has occurred. It's going to be 5 minus QFM. QFM is the flow rate that the, the farmer is going to withdraw. So we do not know the concentration of that. So we denote it as QFM. So it's going to be 5 minus QFM multiplied by 0 0.0015 plus we're going to deal with this one after disturbance has occurred. So it's going to be the concentration, you have stated that the concentration is now 1. So it's going to be plus 1 multiplied by 1 over 2 QFM. So QFM is the concentration that the, the farmer is going to be, no, the, the flow rate that the farmer is going to be withdrawing. But we don't know it, so we denote it as 1 over 2 QFM because half of it is going inside the soil. And then we go on to here, it equals to the output. So the output is C out multiplied by Q out. Our C out is given to us as 0 0.04 multiplied by Q out. Q out is the flow rate that of the material when it leaves the system. So Q out is going to be 1 over 2 QFM plus 5 minus QFM. And then we solve for QFM, and QFM will give us the, the amount of the, flow, or of the flow rate that the farmer should withdraw from the river. So guys, um, this question is also there on the next slide. It's just that the memo does not make sense. That's why I explained how to do it. But the final answer for this question is correct. That's how we do it. So this is how we did it. This is the first one. And then going down, this was the final answer. Okay, so another question here is a, a, a step function question. But I, when when it's a step function, guys, you will understand as you read, you will you will get a feeling of you will get a feeling of what is going on. So. One of the set events is when your code goes flat. What happens if what happens is that the dissolved CO2 escapes from the open coke bottle at some re, at some at some reduced CO2 concentration, the taste loss loses its beat and becomes flat. A friend who is a second year law asked you to help them to figure out how long it takes for a small bottle of coke to become flat if one lets it sit on the table one of your conscientious classmates who has been to all civ and 2006 lectures and always sit in the front row tells you that immediately upon opening the coke um co2 concentration of 0 0.1 mole the flat taste occurs when it's this so guys if you note here if you notice here c naught is when time is zero the concentration is 0 0.1 mole per liter and when time is that is when time is i don't know maybe three minutes four minutes is you get a concentration of 0 0.01 and then the co the co2 escapes the coke at a certain at this constant which is 0 0.1 per minute and if you wait long enough, long enough, let the word speak to you. Already you know that long enough, we don't know what's long enough. It can be three days, four days. So we denote it as C infinity. So already you have C infinity, you have C, C, T, and you have C naught. Ah, guys, that's the function response. You can even see, you can feel it. And then you start uh, gaining momentum and then you know okay so my c infinity is 10 to the power of minus 5 mole per liter and then they say use principle of mass balance analysis to calculate um that amount 
So we write the mass balance analysis equation and then we write the step function response equation which is this and then we write everything that we have and we start substituting in and then we get our final time. Okay guys, this is it. This is all that I have on mass balance analysis question. The rest of the questions are there on our telegram group. We will try to post lots and lots of them with answers that are a bit understandable and easy to follow so yeah some of the questions i will i did not do because um we have limited time all right thank you